All right, and it looks like we are live. How is everybody doing today? Um, today is Saturday, August the 13th, and I'd like to welcome you all back to a wonderful show of the Daily Digital. My name is Junior, and today's show is going to be pretty much all space-themed, uh, but I don't think it's going to be exactly what you guys uh, would imagine. There's going to be a few stories on here that I'm pretty sure nobody would even think of, um, and then the last thing would be if you want to get into AR, Adobe has an app currently that you can download for free on your cell phone that helps you get started with getting into AR. Um, so without further ado, we'll take a quick break and then we'll jump right into it. All right, now welcome back. And the first story we're going to talk about is Adobe uh, they have this app called Adobe Aero, A-E-R-O. Again, you can download it directly from your smartphone device. Uh, I have an iPhone, so I know 100% for sure they have it on iPhone. I've been using it for myself here the past couple of uh, months. Uh, on Android, I'm not 100% sure, but actually let's just jump over to their website uh, and see. So... Introducing Adobe Aero, the most intuitive way to build, view, and share immersive AR experiences available on iOS and as a public beta for desktop on Mac OS and Windows. Uh, so it looks like only, sorry Android folks, it looks like only on iOS currently as far as the cell phone, but I have a beta version on Macs and on Windows. Uh, like I said, I've been using it myself for quite some time here and it is pretty fun. Uh, you do need your own, well, they have some demo items on their app let me see let's see if the video was on here I love painting with my entire body that's why I love making murals I just really like the idea of art expanding into three-dimensional space AR makes that possible for me to create motion on a two-dimensional plane it's really cool that I can export my Photoshop files into Arrow and manipulate those layers in 3D space. I can walk through them. I can see the distance between those layers. It becomes a very real, almost tangible experience. Well, that's pretty also, cool. I didn't even know you could do that. Shared, and Adobe Arrow makes it really easy to share it with my friends and family. When you're using AR, you're seeing a wall and it's not just a wall anymore. You're basically creating an infinite canvas. It's work that's constantly evolving. I could see myself creating artwork with the idea of AR in mind now. Before it would just be, what will this look like? All right, well, you guys can kind of get the gist of it there. Um, but yeah, so essentially you can go ahead and create your own anything. Looks like, like I said, I've been... I'm a 3D artist myself, so I've been always creating 3D stuff. Uh, but it looks like even just artwork and separating the different layers and stuff like that. You can actually create some real in-depth, immersive 3D uh, artwork as well in that case. Um, but if you don't have a background with 3D or anything like that, you can always go to Arrow. And they have, again, like I was saying, demo data in there um, as well, in which you can actually put it in... Uh, I don't see anything in, in re regarding their demo data. But you can actually just put it in and just kind of test it out, play with it, um, and so on and forth, so forth. So this is, again, I mean, the first time I did it, I put a TV in my living room where there wasn't a TV uh, mounted up on the wall. And any time I, you know, walked around, it was still there. I also did a, um, um, a like a painting on somebody's random business card that I had. All you had to do was look at the business card and automatically it just popped up. So, um, and the fun thing about it is again, you guys can just share it with whoever you want to. And then with that link, they can actually see all of your, you know, AR stuff that's going on there. Um, so I would definitely recommend if you want to get started with AR, don't know where to begin. This would be definitely a good start here. Adobe is a major company uh, and I'm actually surprised they don't make you pay for this. Uh, or at least at the time when I had it, they didn't make you pay for it. Uh, so who knows what's going on now, but, um, moving on to the next bit here. So again, like I mentioned before that most of these items are going to be all space themed. And the first one here is basically a different way to get into space. This company, I believe they're called spin launch is actually 
allowing um, and actually I got to actually pull up there let's see if I can pull up their website I don't think I grabbed that one spin launch there we go and I have a video for you guys to watch as well so essentially what this company is doing is allowing uh, rockets objects you know you name it to get launched into space without using uh, all of those propel um, uh, jet engines fuel and stuff like that I'm pretty sure they have like reserves on board for you know whatever case but right now they're really currently in beta they're really just going through the testing process to make sure that it works and it works every single time um, but this is actually very, very interesting in my book because going into space is a lot uh, more expensive than I think a lot of people think. I think every space mission is at least like it's in the millions. It's like 10, 20 million dollars or something like that uh, for every single space mission that they do. Um, so this would actually make it a whole lot more inexpensive for companies to go into space. As we know, things are always as time goes, they get more expensive, even though they say, Oh, yeah, we made this cheaper. It's like, all right, well, how come we still end up paying a whole lot more for them? But that's neither here nor there. So I'm just going to go ahead over here and play this video. So this is this last year. I believe they're headquartered in Texas also, if not mistaken. So they got to go through all these processes, make sure they do all their checks. Um, they got a pressurize this system. So I'm just going to pause that real quick here. So this is what this launch machine actually looks like. This thing inside here is just going to spin and spin and spin and spin and spin. Um, and through a process called perpetual motion. Um, and basically what's going to happen is that it's going to spin so fast that it, you know, at some point in time, they're going to launch it. And it's going to basically propel that rocket out into space. Uh, I believe this one here was their first launch. They've done like seven launches since this one. And the nice thing about it is that they can just continuously reuse the rocket that they've, you know, been um, so graciously launching into space there multiple times. They had a lot of engineers working on this. So there it is, start to spin. They count down, it's going to spin faster. And there it goes. And I mean, that's just amazing. It's a big team there. And there's also another video. I'm going to I'm going to actually post that video or I'm going to post a link to that video in my description for this video as well. Uh, just because that video actually kind of talks you through the mechanics of how everything works. Uh, if you're technically minded and you want to actually understand the back end side of it, I will definitely watch that video as well. Uh, they don't go into everything, of course, it's probably proprietary information, but they go into a little bit of how the process works and stuff like that. So then the next object that we have here is a company called uh, Blue Origin. And Blue Origin is actually sending tourists out into space. And I had no clue this was already going on. They have actually been doing this for quite some time, and I believe they just completed their sixth mission... Yes, Blue Origin launches six people on company six space tourism mission. Um, and I mean, I don't even know when the first one was, but they did a couple of firsts. So the first person from Portugal and also the first person from Egypt actually reached space on this mission here. Uh, I'm going to wait and see. This video might be worth actually looking at. Sometimes I just hate all these ads. I mean, I know this is how websites make money, but dude, you got like a million ads on here. This is space.com. 
All right, so moving forward. Um, so Blue Origin, this is this six crude. Oh, really? Uh, six crude space, space flight is in the books. All right, so there it is there. I just want to watch this video real quick. A uh, little bit of the video. It's like 11 minutes. And I believe they actually stayed in space for about like 10 minutes. We started at about 3,700 feet above median sea level, and that's where Launch Site 1 is located. And we've got a great shot of the BE-3 and, of course, of the booster looking down at West Texas. Yeah, it looks like they're in Texas also. Um, all right, so it goes up into space, and then I'm going to play this one here. And, of course, it's going to do a... This unforgettable vacation memory. It didn't actually begin here. This memory began with yeah, let's that. skip that. So this is where they start to come back down, I believe, and actually land. Reaching its maximum reentry velocity here, just under Mach four. Starting to slow down here now. The wedge fins, the steering fins, and the ring fin all working together, earning their keep to guide this booster home. touchdown welcome back to earth new shepherd for a lot of us at blue this moment in flight is one of our proudest moments so yeah so they successfully launched six people up into space and as you just saw there they successfully brought them back down into earth uh, and it, it was called new shepherd okay so they launched out there in west west texas also um they spent about 10 minutes out into space um I think they share the names yeah the six people on board were Kobe Cotton one of the founders of the popular YouTube channel dude perfect Mario Ferreira and Sarah Sabri who became the first per first people from Portugal and Egypt respectively to reach space uh, technology pioneer Clint Kelly the third and telecommunications executive Steve Young uh, not the NFL quarterback Steve Young and also Vanessa O'Brien um, NS22 made O'Brien the first woman to ever complete the Explorer's Extreme Trifecta. So she did all three. She went to Mount Everest, the tallest uh, mountain, world's tallest mountain. And also she went to the deepest um, point in the ocean, which is the Pacific's Challenger Deep. Uh, so she's, I mean, she's an amazing woman. Um, but the nice thing about this is that a Dow, we've mentioned Dow's before, uh, a moon uh, company called Moon Dow, or a Dow called Moon Dow, I should say. Um, they want to decentralize access to space with the long-term goal of creating a self-sustaining, self-governing colony on the moon to act as a launch point for humanity to explore the cosmos. Uh, so what they did was they actually sponsored, um, and I was actually following this back in, I think it was like June or July or something like that. Um, they did like a whole NFT drop and auction and, you know, got volunteers together. Uh, they actually paid for um, uh, Cotton, Kobe Cotton and Sarah Sabri. They didn't have to pay for their trip. They actually, Moondow actually paid or sponsored their trip. Um, and it, I mean, that's, that's just amazing. These DAOs, you know, once you have a collective group of people actually working together to achieve one main goal, um, you can really achieve a whole lot. And this was this was nice. This was really nice. Um, so, yeah, so that is that. If you guys are interested into going into space yourself, please do check out Moon DAO. 
uh, they might pay for your trip and also check out the company uh, Blue Origin. They will um, definitely be sending more people out into space in the near, near future. Um, and then this next company here is actually sending, well, let me not say company. So there was some discrepancy I found online as to who was the first to launch an NFT out into space. And there's also some discrepancy online about who was the first to actually mint an NFT out into space. Um, so I'm just going to show you a couple of articles here. Again, take this, don't take this at face value. Uh, I'm not sure, you know, the internet lies all the time. So I'm not sure who exactly was the first NFT to be minted out in space or the first to go out into space and stuff like that. Um, but Again, I just wanted to share this with you all just so you are aware that, hey, we're sending NFTs in space now and we're also minting them in space. We're like, I don't think anybody can hack <laughs> a, a, a minting process out in space. Um, but yeah, so actually I want to go this one first. So this is the first art NFT from outer space that could be minted in February. This was in January 2022. Um, again, this was a art NFT. I don't know. I couldn't find and see if they actually did mint it. Um, but yeah, so this is an art NFT, I guess, as opposed to like a music NFT or something like that. They just want to specify that it's going to be artwork. Um, and I'm assuming that they're just, you know, going to take the digital artwork on a flash drive or something like that, maybe even a laptop. And then they're going to create the minting process, put it on the blockchain and everything uh, from space. So, uh, it's a global cyber security, cyber security company called WiseKey. They are behind it, uh, and they have a website here, wisesat.space, uh, and they launched their own satellites into space. The you know in January, uh, and they're working correctly and communicating with Vault IC encrypted communications despite working in extremely low temperatures. Uh, during the testing process, which will take two to four weeks, WiseKey will be working to activate the NFT and then execute the launch of a prestigious art piece in mid-February. Um, so I'm going to do some more digging on that to see if WiseKey actually did, uh, did mint it. That would be pretty cool. Uh, the minting process. According to the company, NFTs do not normally contain enough information to ensure that the minter was the originator or possessor of the origin object at the time of minting, or that they had the authority to mint such an NFT. Moreover, these information uh, associated with an NFT can easily degrade over long periods of time, making it difficult to discern whether an NFT is authentic or what object the NFT is associated with, or the location where the object itself is located, said the company. Without identifying the and establishing the rights of the mentor, the long-term value of the NFT is diminished. Um, so they aim to produce secured NFTs, which can act as a device authenticator. Encrypting the connection between the tokens and the devices, such as autonomous vehicles, self-driving cars, and trucks and smart homes. Um, Six provinces of Spain have been involved in a project and are considering using YSAT's constellation for data acquisition of hundreds of thousands of sensors located in territories not norm normally uh, covered by traditional ground-based networks. Uh, so yeah, that's on a different note there. So, um, And also with that being said, we have a different company. This is... So there's a... NFT collection called House of Legends, if you've, you may have heard of it before, uh, but they became one of the first NFT projects to mint from space. So this is important. They say one of the first. <laughs> so I was like, all right, this can't be the first because the other one was the first and they came out in January. You guys, you know, came out in like April or something like that. But, you know, everything's pretty new right now, especially in the NFT world, blockchain, Web3 and all that stuff. So there's going to be a lot of first um and in my opinion, I don't, I don't really care who's the first. I just care that it's being done and it's pretty cool stuff. So, um, so if you were looking to the stars on April 8th, 2022, you might have witnessed a remarkable event. While you probably couldn't see it, SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket performed the first ever private space mission to the ISS. In a historic breakthrough, the Axe 1 mission took four amateur astronauts to the ISS. But 
they did not fly there alone. A collection of 30 super rare House of Legends uh, NFTs also went along for the ride. These assets will drop from space into an auction with all proceeds going to a charity. Um, so basically, they just, you know, um, um, what's it called? They basically did an airdrop, <laughs> or, or should I say a space drop uh, of that NFT there. Um, and I don't think they talk too, too much about, you know, they, they get more into like, you know, the actual collection and NFTs and whatnot. Uh, one of uh, House of Legends' most remarkable initiatives is a partnership with Israeli impact investor and philanthropist Eitan Stibb, uh, who just flew to the International Space Station, the first ever private space mission. Um, yeah, the first NFTs to drop from space. For this project, they invited children around the world to draw their hopes and dreams for humanity. Then the team selected 30 of these port portrayals and with Amit Shimoni's vision contribution, transformed them into unique NFT artworks. Now they are more than just child's play. They are exceptional depictions of the project's legends of holding the children's handmade uh, sketches. While Stib will display the NFTs through a tablet in space, the super rare assets will drop from the stars straight into an auction on Earth, which will begin once the crew returns from the ISS. All the proceeds from the auctions will go towards HOL's House of Legends charity initiative to help communities in India and Africa access clean drinking water. And that is right there is amazing because uh, they definitely do need it. Um, so, yeah, I think that's all it on that one. Um, so, yeah, you guys definitely let me know what you think about that. These NFTs, I mean, the NFT world has been going crazy for months. Um, again, as you see, they've been doing this since like January, April, May and stuff like that, dropping NFTs from space. Uh, and people are still just trying to fight over, you know, Board 8 Yacht Club and stuff like that. Um, not to knock down Board 8 Yacht Club or anything, uh, but I mean, the NFT world is growing. Like it's massively, massively growing. Uh, I myself would rather an NFT from space than, you know, a board ape or something like that. Because, hey, I mean, you never know. that NFT could be a key or ticket holder uh, to actually get on the next space flight, you know. Um, so, yeah. So, you guys definitely let me know what you think about all of that. The description will be full of all the links to every single one of these articles and videos that I share with you here today. Uh, my name is Junior. Once again, you can check me out on all of my social media channels. And that is all I have for you here today. Thank you so much for tuning in and see you guys next time.